Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Danny, your friendly neighborhood DIYer. And today is very exciting because it is all about celebrating a united passion for DIY thrift flips, or what I like to call thrift and lift. I have teamed up with other creators and we are sharing our love of DIY and giving furniture pieces new life all while supporting Habitat for Humanity this holiday season. We are here to inspire you to create your own thrift lift transformations, all while supporting a great cause. After this video, you can check out all the other creators who are part of this amazing celebration. If you are not familiar with Habitat for Humanity, their restores are home and building supply stores that accept and resell quality used and new building materials. So when you shop or donate at your local restore, all the fun that are generated go towards the Habitat Building Home Projects. If you want to help support this cause with us, you can click the donate button right under this video to donate directly to Habitat for Humanity. And this will be available till the end of the year. So without further ado, let's jump into this thrift lift celebration. Editor, roll the tape. Boop. First off, of course my journey started at the ReStore and it was there I found my prize diamond in the rough. My biggest challenge was if it was going to fit in my car or not, but it did. It just fit. Hooray! Here it is, guys. This is the beautiful cabinet. Yay! She is stunning. Ugh, what did I pay for it? 80 bucks. That's pretty darn good. It's in really great condition already. It has obviously two drawers at the top. The interior drawers are a little rough, but I like that it tells a story. And then I love this little cabinet with the windows. This is exactly what I was looking for. And then we have the drawer at the bottom. The hardware actually isn't too bad on it. It's kind of like a faux brass, but I think I have something else that I wanna place on this. I love the detail for the feet. It just has a lot of personality. It looks really rustic. It's so in line with this lovely farmhouse feel. Now, before we get thrift and lifting, let me show you the space that this is gonna go into. Ta-da! Welcome to the purple bathroom. The cabinet is gonna go actually in this little nook. I love it for this nook, mostly because I actually found an inspiration photo online. This was a Pinterest find. And when I saw it, I was like, this is what I need for my bathroom. Now, there are two cabinets on either side, but with the cabinet on the inside, I'm actually gonna have about this much room between where the cabinet's gonna sit that I can actually access this. So the items that I'm gonna put in here are like things that you don't want on display. It's like cleaning supplies and just like stuff Stuff that you don't want people to see. So that is what will go in there and the cabinet's gonna go in here. As you know, I titled this part one because there is going to be a part two to this video, which is going to result in me basically making over this entire space. But part one is about getting the right elements in the space so that when I do make it over, it all comes together nicely, you know? And I just wanted to give this cabinet a little bit of pizzazz, a little bit of character beyond the vintage character that it already carries. So let me show you what we're gonna do to it. So what am I doing to lift this thrift? The answer to that is, Dig <laughs> And while you're all like, wah, wah, stay with me because I feel like it's been a while since we've seen a really stellar decoupage. And on top of that, I don't think I've ever done one on this channel. So hopefully this is new to you guys. I'm gonna try to give you as many tips and things that I've learned about decoupage over the many years of decoupaging um, so that you feel like you get something out of this. So it doesn't feel like just another episode of decoupage. For example, did you know that the word decoupage derives from the word decoupe, which means to cut out? Did you know that? Now you do. And that's something you wouldn't have learned in a regular decoupage video, right? That's cool. <laughs> so there's the first thing we've learned today. Cool. Coo, 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 coo. 
I will not be decoupaging the exterior. I actually think it is quite lovely, but I will be changing out the hardware and I'm gonna be focusing on decoupaging the interior of this entire cabinet so that it kind of feels like it has a moment on the inside, a little personality, kind of like the way we all should be, beautiful on the inside and out. Anyways, I actually went and picked up a very special paper. This kind of paper is called chiogami. So it's like origami, but chi at the front, so chiogami. Chiogami paper means paper of a thousand words. I just love that, it's so poetic, don't you think? And as you can see, it's quite thick. So every sheet of this Japanese chiyogami paper, it's meticulously produced by hand. The base paper is a combination of kozo and sulfite, and the pigments used are fade resistant, resulting in a strong, soft, versatile, decorative paper, ideal for many applications. It is an absolutely stunning paper type, and very, very, very easy to decoupage with. The look that I'm going for is quite dark with some beautiful gold accents, like this nice brassy look. And of course I went with something floral because that is what I love. So I wanted to go to something that was really going to speak to me, but also really match the tone and the feeling that I was going for in my bathroom. It almost breaks my heart to use it. However, we're going to because it's gonna make my cabinet beautiful. So let's get started. They didn't have enough of the same kind of paper that I needed, so I ended up getting two patterns that are very similar to each other. What I'm hoping is that the pattern that I like the most can be on the interior of the cabinet, and then the pattern that wasn't my favorite but still looks very close to it can go inside the drawers. The first step was to remove the shelving inside the cabinet so that it was much easier to decoupage both the inside and the shelf. This step might not be completely necessary depending on the piece, but I always think it's a good idea to scuff up the surface and remove any icky parts on the wood and help provide something more for your glue to stick to. I'm giving a quick sand using a 220 sandpaper to the inside of the cabinet, both the sides and the shelf and inside the drawers. This is always the less glamorous part, but one of the most important, and that is to clean your piece. I provided it with a good vacuum. I'm not gonna lie, there were a lot of cobwebs on this thing. And then I wiped down all the surfaces with an all-purpose cleaner. Well done, Danny, you get an A. Starting with the inside of the cabinet, I'm first measuring all the walls of the interior, taking note of any notches inside that I might need to be aware of when cutting out my lovely Chiyogami paper. This paper had about a quarter inch border around it, so I'm first removing this so I don't forget to subtract it from any of my measurements. I was just leaving no room for error. Now, I know you're all going to realize this because you're smart, and of course I'm seeing it now too, but if you're making notches on paper like this, just flip it over and work on the white side so that you can see your pencil marks properly and you avoid ruining the paper. This is very obvious. Sometimes I just don't get there quick enough, okay? No hate. <laughs> Using my rotary cutter and straight edge, I then cut all my necessary pieces. To decoupage this beautiful paper onto my cabinet, I'm using a matte gel medium. Some of you may be asking, why am I using this over a matte Mod Podge? Both products are great and will get you to your final goal. However, beyond being a bit more expensive than your average decoupage glue, Gel Medium offers a lot of resistance to chemicals, water, and ultraviolet light. Basically, it's just going to protect your piece from yellowing over a long period of time, where your regular decoupage glue may tend to make your piece yellow sooner if left in the sun for long periods of time. Being in the bathroom and being near a window Window, I just wanted to ensure that this piece got all the good fixings to make sure it would last a long time. I'm being pretty liberal with the glue, making sure I cover the entire surface with a good amount of glue. If there are any corners that lift up, I just added a little more glue along the edge and on top to make sure it was good and secure. If you want a scraper with a soft edge on it, you can use this to move bubbles out, but I found it very effective to just use my hand so not to damage the paper. Once I was happy with that, I added the bottom piece to the back of the cabinet. At first I thought I was gonna bring the paper all the way to the edge, which you see I've done here, but after seeing it on there, I quickly changed my mind and removed it before it dried. I think that this just provided a much more purposeful look to it, in my humble opinion. 
after that, it was basically just rinse and repeat for all the rest of the surfaces I was covering. Okay, I have all the interior of the cabinet drying now, all of the top pieces drying. This one looks a little wrinkly, but the bottom of it was actually morphed, so it's not. It looks lovely, so what's gonna happen is this is gonna dry overnight, get nice and hard, and then I'm gonna do a top coat over top of this, and then it's gonna harden and seal very nicely. So I had some thoughts today. Well, I was gonna use the other paper to wallpaper the sides, but I kinda got this idea that maybe it would be just nice to chalk paint both these sections black, especially that little back piece too. Like leave this, but do the back and that piece black. It actually might be quite nice. So I'm gonna sit on it and see how I feel tomorrow. So with that said, I will see you guys tomorrow. So it was the next day and after noodling the chalk paint idea, I definitely decided it was a good idea and I went for it. Using the Annie Sloan chalk paint Athenian black left over from my cabinet, you all know that cabinet, I carefully painted all four interior sides, leaving the outer sides exposed in the wood. Again, I just felt that this decision made it feel more purposeful looking. I love how matte it looks. I don't think I'm gonna put a wax on top of it because this isn't really like a high traffic area. I'm not really worried about it, but I think it looks amazing. And when you step back and look at it, it just looks great. I'm very happy with the decision. I'm gonna get started on adding in the gel medium on top of all of this, kind of seal it all together. Together, and uh, now let's start getting the hardware. Did I show you guys the new hardware? I don't know if I did. I can't even remember what I filmed yet. So this is the new hardware. I actually repoed this off of an old dresser that I owned way back in the day. I love the handles, so I kept them, hoping one day that I will find a use for them. It is the perfect size for this cabinet. Literally don't even need to drill new holes, just pop them on and it's gonna be beautiful. So happy. I'm ready. Are you ready? Are you, are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Didn't know who to point to. You. After applying the top coat, it really started to show the creases that were created by the underboard, but I wasn't worried about it because once it was dry, you weren't going to see this at all. So don't be afraid if your piece ever shows this too. Just trust the process, friends. It's gonna be okay. If you're decoupaging an old piece like mine, the wood tends to be a little bit warped and you're gonna get creases like this anyways. So don't be afraid when you see that. In the long run, those little creases are the last thing you see when looking at this cabinet. It's like embracing the world of wabi-sabi. All those imperfections are really what makes the piece beautiful to begin with. Sorry, but like, that's just stunning. It is beautiful. From this hardware to the gold brass. Oh, it's so pretty. I loved the way this cabinet turned out. While the changes weren't massive, the small changes that I did make, like updating the hardware and adding the beautiful floral chiogami paper inside, it really made this piece feel like it took on new life. It really did feel lifted. It's going to be the perfect vintage looking piece to add to my bathroom and I cannot wait to see how it looks in the completed space. I just love it and it expresses my personality so much and that's what pieces in your home should do. I was just happy that I could take someone's trash and make it into my shiny treasure. It's a true hero story if you know what I mean. <laughs> So now that we have the thrift and lift portion of this programming complete, I wanna show you the second part to part one that we are gonna complete before the big makeover happens. So recently, um, Jeffrey and I started to pull up the floor upstairs just to see what we were dealing with underneath and what came up was brilliant. And you can see that it does go into the bedroom as well, but Knowing that we have that, um, I'm pretty confident that this actually goes into the bathroom area. And to be honest, I would rather live right now with this floor than this floor. This is just a laminate mat. It's like a faux tile, it's not real. And it sits on top of a piece of plywood like this. And you basically just cut it to your room and Bob's your uncle. 
I just think that having the original wood floors in here would be so beautiful. It would make it feel so farmhouse, so original. So my hope is to remove this floor and hopefully in a perfect world, this is what will be underneath. And if not, then it looks like we'll probably be investing in some tiling. First things first, we gotta rip up some baseboards. If that was the original color of this bathroom, I think I'll take purple. Okay, so what do I do? First thing you wanna do is turn off the water supply. Open up the tap here. Like, oh, you mean like run the water out? Yeah, just gotta let any pressure out if there's anything in there. You can disconnect those two lines. There you go, the water. Now we disconnect this? Yep. Yeah, drains are gross, yeah. I feel like I'm reliving the grudge. More like the grunge. <laughs> oh, see, I told you to be careful with that. And then you just pour gross water all over yourself. Oh, I'm so sad. You can't just let it go and drain because the drain just drains back in. <laughs> Here, pour this into the toilet. You got a Danny Plumbing special. I have it all over my hands and my legs. This is the dirty part of DIY. <laughs> I like crafting and painting. I am pretty much good to cut her free and pour out. Okay, next the pooper. Taking out a toilet, never done before. What do I do? Well, first you want to empty the tank. How do I do that? Turn off the water and flush. <laughs> you can then take off your water supply. You lift the caps on the side of the toilet. Pop up. Is she doing a good job? What do you think, Mr. Supervisor? He has concerns. Toilet stuff has been dealt with. Hope you all enjoyed that little plumbing 101. Basically, at this point, it was time to just start pulling up that floor and crossing fingers that we find something underneath that we can work with. Oh no, I think they glued this right down to the OG floors. It did not come up nicely. Tuck it underneath in a linoleum here and see if you can feel that. I really glued it down. Not as easy as it looks. There we go. I hate stupid floor. Needless to say, this floor in the bathroom has been more work than we had bargained for. I'm coming for you, floor! I will find you. Never give up, never surrender. We were kind of naive, I'm not gonna lie. We're pulling up the floor in the hallway and it was so easy. We were like, yeah, we could just do this in the bathroom, no problem. It's so much more work than we intended. There's just staples everywhere. Wash your hands on those nails. Corner. This is what we found underneath and it is in great condition. It is a great color. Very happy about that. I'm just glad that there's floor underneath this. If we had ripped all this up to find out that there wasn't really anything underneath, that would have been bad. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Bathroom renos in old, old houses. Super fun. The next day, using my oscillating tool, I started to cut away any of the OSB board that ran under the wall. It turns out that the walls were actually built on top of the flooring, which I was not expecting, but it wasn't in my plan to rip down those walls right now. So this tool made it really easy to cut away the boards against the wall. From here, Jeff and I just went at her. And after many hours of ripping and hammering, we were left with this. Ta-da! We got all of the plywood pieces off the floor. We are cleaned up, vacuumed. These boards here need to get replaced. We need to put new boards here and over here. And then there, we're gonna switch out a couple of the boards. So uh, more to report on the floor tomorrow. Update. Jeffrey and I went outside and we cut all these new pieces. These are all the new support pieces that we've built into the floor so that there's a little bit better support underneath us. Now what we're gonna do is start putting down the boards again and filling in the floor. Feels like we are finally getting to a place where the floor is gonna be a floor again. I brought Smarties with me. I'm letting him do the work and I'm eating Smarties. 
Now that's a smart decision. <laughs> Try smart? No thanks. Oh my gosh, the last board is going in. So now we can screw them in? Yeah. So after the boards went down, I took my belt sander to the entire space. A normal thing to do would have been to just rent a floor sander, but the space was so small and so was my wallet, apparently. But my motivation was just so big <laughs> that I went for it. Was this a mistake? Oh yes. But I tried to make light of the situation. I also suggest you should probably invest in knee pads. Wow, that is a labor of love. No matter what it costs in the future or how small the space is, I will buy one of those floor sanders. Don't care. If it's a closet, don't care. Renting it, don't even care if it costs a lot of money. That was a lot. Honestly, we like, it's a small space. We can just use our belt sander. It'll be fine. My back ain't fine. That's all I can say about that. But I'm really happy because all the crap that was in the baseboards is gone. Anything weird that we found is gone. Boards are secured. It just feels really safe in here. That's all I can say. So tomorrow, I'm gonna start some caulking in the cracks and then I'm gonna be painting on top of it. You're probably wondering Wondering why am I not staining? Why wouldn't I just keep it the wood? The truth is we have much bigger plans for this space. That would involve us basically just ripping this whole room apart. And we just don't want to spend the money to tile this place. We don't want to spend the money to put down new boards. This was something that we knew we could afford because we're basically just taking most things away. So this is our quick fix. I'm not going to pay to stain these boards because Frankly, they're not nice enough, so we're gonna paint them. I know there's some of you going, mm -mm, nay, nay, you should probably stain it or tile over top, but you just wait. It's gonna be great, have faith. Okay, bye. Off camera, I ended up filling in the gaps of the floor with caulking, and this is what it looked like afterwards. It's not much, but I certainly will not be losing any bobby pins on these floors anytime soon. And now that that caulking was done, using the Bare Kitchen and Bath primer, I did a full primer coat on top of these floors. And I gotta say, after all of that, it was very refreshing to see the vision come to life. Or at least a part of it come to life. You guys, I got up really early today and I finished out a second coat on the floor and I gotta say, it looks amazing. This bathroom floor was a journey. I felt pretty defeated at certain points, but we got there and we have a completely primed floor. I am so excited. You know, I feel kind of torn because white was not the color I was going to go for for this floor, but now seeing it white like this, I don't know, I just kind of think it looks kind of cool. It looks good. I'm gonna noodle that for next week because uh, we finally get to tackle the space. A lot is about to happen in this bathroom, so make sure you're subscribed, hit that bell notification so you always know when I upload a new video every Saturday, 8 a.m. And I hope you really enjoyed that thrift and lift. Again, reminder to go and donate to the Habitat for Humanity this holiday season. The button is below or click the link in my description box, learn a little bit more and find out if it feels good to you. Thank you so much for watching. Go check out all the other creators who have created a thrift and lift piece for this holiday. So much inspiration in one playlist and I hope you all enjoy it. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.